here and doing. I'm from Cameroon. I will speak English. My English is not good, but I pray in Jesus' name, the Holy Spirit will be interpreting to you as I'm speaking. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe you have watched my first video. I did talking about the church of Christ that was dirty. Jesus, Jesus Christ showed me in a vision how his church is dirty. I saw Jesus Christ coming from heaven with a host of angels. When he landed on earth, he wanted to go and open the, the door of uh, the, the church. Then he starts screaming, my church is dirty, my church is dirty. And as he was screaming, I saw a multitude of Christians. All of them were doing like this. Jesus, take us with you. Jesus, take us with you. And then when they were praying like that, Jesus cannot even look at them. And Jesus was saying, no, no, I can't go in. My church is dirty. I put it in YouTube. When you go in YouTube, just click, my church is dirty. When you will listen, the Lord will minister to you in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. After this vision, I, I asked God, what is the meaning of this vision because inside the vision when the christian were crying my my uh, jesus take us with you i noticed that they were naked all of them they were naked so i was asking god god what is the naked naked nakedness that is inside the church i know that this generation is a cook uh, generation my father please show me what is the nakedness that is among the the children of god on august this year, 2011, the Lord visited me. In a, the, uh, the Lord showed me, I, I saw myself going to see a pastor in his house. When I went inside that house, I asked the pastor that I want to drink water. The pastor asked me to go in the backyard to fetch some water. And in that backyard, there is a well. So when I was in the, in the backyard, I look at that well, and the Spirit of God inside the dream told me that there is a strange power in th inside that well. So immediately, I start to pray. I say, in the name of Jesus, any strange power that is in this well, manifest yourself, manifest yourself, manifest yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus, manifest yourself. As I was saying like this, I noticed a, a, a woman came out from that well. She came out like this. Very proud personality. And I noticed around her some little children. Then I, I was shocked. I said, I'm coming every time in this house to fetch water. Do you mean you are inside this, this well? She said, yes. I know you. What do you want from me? I said, who are you? She, I said, in the name of Jesus. Come out from this well. In the name of Jesus, come out from this well. I said, I was saying that this fire come out from me to burn her. And she was resisting. She's doing like this. She says, you are not the one that invite me here. If you want me to go, go and ask all the sisters in Christ, all the women of God in the world. They are the ones that allow me to be here. I said, I look behind to see if there is a child, a, a woman of God around me. I was told in the dream that they went to buy some stuff in the market. Then I told, I, look, I, I, I looked at that woman and I knew in the dream that she's the queen of the coast. I asked her, what is your mission? She said, her mission is to quench the fire of God into the life of pastors, of ministers of God. And then, then I, 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 I say, in the name of Jesus, come out, come out for that well. She, she, she insists by saying that if I want her to go, I must ask all the women that allow her to be there. Those that those women are the one that can ask her to go because I was not the one that invites her there. So I tried to look who can fight this woman with me. I ran and I looked, I saw a pastor, I said, Pastor, come, let us fight the queen of the coast. She's in the midst of the children of God and she's boasting. Let us fight her in the name of Jesus. The pastor came like this, he was holding a Bible in, in the hand. He said, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, but no fire. I said, Pastor, let's pray, let's pray. And the queen of the coast started laughing. She said, look, you this pastor. 
The, the, the light of God in you is just like a candle. If I just make like this, and the light will go off. I said, Pastor, do you, can you listen? She's boasting, let fight. Then I, I start saying in the name of Jesus. The woman say, I told you, if you want me to go, ask all the women of God in the world. They, they allow me to be here. They are the one, they are the one that must ask me to go. Then I stood up. That was the end. I went back to God. I said, Father, what do you want me? What is the meaning of this dream? Father, tell me what's the meaning of this dream. What is the queen of the coast doing in the, inside the house of God? And in that dream, the queen of the coast gave me the name of three pastors that she has already quenched the fire of God in them. I will not mention the name of those pastors. But those pastors, they, they still have church. They still, they, they still preach the gospel of God. But they don't know that the queen of the coast has already quenched the fire of God in them. Brethren, this make me, I was shaking. I was afraid. And I asked God, Father, please explain me this dream again. Then on the 6th of September this year, I saw an angel of God. In the dream, I knew that she's an angel of God. I don't know why she came as a woman. And when she came, the, her, her hair was tied. She tied her hair. She covered her hair. Her face was without makeup. She, she, she covered her chest. And, and she has, I noticed that she has a long, a, a long skirt, very long skirt. I hung her. She was surrounded with clouds. And then she, she called my name. She said to me, you are the right way to heaven. The way of holiness. Without holiness, nobody can see God. And if she, when she was talking like this, she pointed the earth. She said, there are two women who started just like you. Those women are still on earth. This is what happened. When she said, this is what happened. I was able to see those women. I was able to understand what they are saying. They were talking to each other. This is what they were saying. Let us serve God in holiness. And let us warn all the women of God. Let us tell them, show them how to dress according to the will, the, 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 the will of God. As they were, they were talking like this, I saw those two women going to to the midst of other children of God. And those children of God, most of them were women. And all those children of God, they were praising God. Really, they were praising God. But what I noticed, those women, those 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 other sisters in Christ, they were praising God, but they were dressed like this world, like the fashion of the world. They put on trousers, uh, uh, wigs, earrings, makeup, you know, and those two, two women was keep on telling them the way people are dressing, God does not like it. God does not like it. But those women of God refused to listen to them. Those two women got discouraged. They doubted. They start talking. They say, ah, maybe it's not God that sent us. Look at those sisters in Christ. They fear God. Although that they are dressed, that the way they are dressed is not really godly, but they fear God. Is it really true that if they die now, they will not make heaven? Maybe it's not God that asked us to go and warn them. So they were doubting God. And the Spirit of God, the, the angel of God that was with me was angry. She said, that is the spirit of confusion among those two women. And then she turned, she turned and looked at me. She said, now you go. Warn those, uh, those women, those sisters in Christ that is in the world. Tell them about holiness. That without holiness, no eyes shall see the Lord. That I should, she tell me she teach, to teach the other women how to dress. And then she added this to me. She said, anything you want to do for God, do it now. Then she added this. She said, there are some debts, debts in your life. Some restriction that you refuse to make. Make every effort to pay your debt. That's what, that's how the dream ended. I woke up, I woke up, it was around two o'clock. And I was, I was, I was shaking. 
Because I knew, I just, I just had encounter with God. And I start crying, God, how am I going to tell women? How am I going to start? Father, help me. Help me. Father, I don't even know how to speak English very well. How am I going to start? Who is going to listen to me? The next day, in the night, the, I saw in my dream again, a white man, a pastor, he was preaching as he was preaching. It, it, it became as if he's, he's falling, he's dying on the altar. A young man came to me and said, the message that the Lord asked you to go and tell those people, if you fail to tell them, that blood is in your hand. It made me afraid again. Because the Lord is angry about the way women of the last days are dressing. They dress like the world. They don't know the difference between a child of God and non believer. And no pastor is talking about it. That's why the Lord is sending me to warn women of the last days. This message is not for everybody. This message is for people that are really determined to make heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. And I will use this opportunity to try to explain to you how God wants both our body, our soul, and our spirit. Because some people say that God only look at inside. Brethren, I pray in the name of Jesus, as you listen to this message that, that I'm about to talk now, your life will never be the same in the mighty name of Jesus. You, you will not serve God in vain. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My sister, my sister Antonia, please open the book, the word of God in the book of Genesis chapter 10, uh, 35, verse 1 to 5. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I read Genesis chapter 35 from 1 I read Then God said to Jacob Arise and go up to Bethel and dwell there Amen. And make an altar there to God Who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau your brother And Jacob said to his household And to all who were with him Put away the foreign God Put away the foreign God That are among you That are among you Purify yourself Purify yourself And change your garment Change your garment then, let us arise and go up to Bethel, Amen. and I will make an altar there to God. Amen. Who, who, who answered me in the day of my distress, Amen. and has been with me in the way which I have gone? So, so they gave, so they gave Jacob all the foreign gods, yes, which were with, which were in their hands, mm. and the earrings, and the earrings which were in their ears, yes, and Jacob hid them under the terrible tree, Amen. which was by Shechem. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. When God instructed Jacob to go to Bethel, build an altar to him, Bethel was the place that in first, he first encountered God. Jacob told his household to get rid of all the idols. Jacob told his idols to change their dressing, to cleanse themselves from evil. And their household, they removed all their pagan idols, they removed all their earrings, gave it to Jacob. Jacob buried all those unclean things under the tree of Session. Why am I emphasizing on this? You can notice that among the idols, hearing was among. Because some people will say hearing is not an idol. Hearing is an idol. If it's your child of God, you are still wearing hearing on you. Your body, you are sinning against God. You better go and repent. Hallelujah. Encounter with the Holy God must produce not only inward visible change, but also outward visible change. According to the word of God in Genesis chapter 5, you notice that the, uh, Jacob told his household to change their clothing, to change their ungodly dressing. Encounter with the Holy Ghost must lead to a total removal, to a 
your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Sister, read First Peter chapter three, verse three to five. Praise the Lord. Amen. The book of First Peter chapter three, from from three to five, I read. Mm. Do not let do do not let your argument be merrily outward. Yes, arranging arranging the arranging the hair, mm. wearing gold, wearing or gold. putting on fine apparel. Yes, rather let it be the hidden person of the heart. Amen. With the incorrupt with the incorruptible beauty yes. of a gentle and quiet spirit, yes. which is very precious in the sight of God. Amen. For in this manner, for for in this manner, in the form in the former times, the holy women who trusted in God yes. also adored themselves, yes. being submissive yes. to their own husband. Amen. 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 God does not if you are a child of God. You don't have to adorn yourself with all those ungodly things that uh, uh, unbelievers put on their body. The holy women of God does not adorn themselves with, with all those worldly things. They adorn themselves with the word of God. Hallelujah. Amen. When they see you, they see the glory of God in you. Without you even speaking a word. They must see that something is in you that is, when a believer sees you, they will know that something in you that, that is not in them. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So only your apprentices must speak. Only your apprentices must tell who you are. Hallelujah. Amen. Apostle Paul said that if you are the mark of Jesus Christ in you, what is the mark of Jesus Christ in you? What is the mark that may differentiate you which, between a non-believer and you? Hallelujah. Amen. There must be a difference between Delilah and Deborah. Hallelujah. Amen. That is why God Almighty instructed us in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20. Hallelujah. That our, our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. Sister Lee, uh, uh, read in the, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20, I read. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20 says, For you were bought at a price. Yeah. Therefore glorify God. Amen. In your body. Amen. And in your spirit. Amen. Which are God. Glorify God in your body. Ask yourself, are you glorifying God with your body? Are you glorifying God in your body? When they want to talk at, with you, uh, talk to you, you say God does not look at, at your appearance. This is the word of God. It's not my own word. The word of God says you must glorify God in your body and in your spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. All those unclean things, all those makeups, all those attachments, all those uh, 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 wounds that you put on, on your head that makes you look like masquerade, throw them away in the mighty name of Jesus. You don't need them. You don't need them. Hallelujah. Amen. God has given you your hair, your natural hair, which is your glory. Don't defy your hair with unclean thing, attachment. You were not born at the image the, of, of Satan. All those things. The reason why the creed of the coast and produce makeup on earth is to be seducing men. When you apply blue eyeshadow here, your eyes will be will be seducing men. Your eyes will be attracting. We godly women, we are not dressing to attract any human being. We are dressing to to please God. Hallelujah. We, are, we will not allow all those ungodly things to come and defile our, our, our body. Because our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go back to the Old Testament. See how God requires holiness into his tabernacle. How much more your body that is the temple of the Holy Spirit? You have defiled the temple of the Holy Spirit with unclean things. You have defiled the temple of the Holy Spirit with idol. Anyone that destroys the temple of the Holy Spirit, God will destroy him. I pray it will not be your portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. So, you and me know now that God does look at the outward appearance. Hallelujah. According to the word of God in Proverbs 27 verse 19. Hallelujah. The word of God says, as in water, face reflect face. 
So a man's heart reflects his real person. Amen. If you are pure only uh, inside, truly, if you are pure inside, your outside must be pure. When you are washing a plate, you cannot wash plate inside and the outside. You you leave it like that. You must wash inside and outside so it will be presentable. And our God Almighty is not an incomplete God. When He comes in somebody's life, He must clean the inside and the outside. Hallelujah. Amen. All the evil thoughts of dressing come from the inside. Before you put, you decide to put on all those wigs, all those attachments, all those trousers, you have thought it in your heart first. A man with that brain cannot just stand up and start dressing anyhow. So you have to meditate in your heart. You have to meditate that tomorrow I will put on trousers. Tomorrow I will put on makeup. Tomorrow I will put on wigs. So your heart is already defined. Hallelujah. Amen. So God look at outside and inside. Hallelujah. Amen. So I know you love God. I know you want to please God. Please, my sister. When you go on, on uh, to market to buy clothes, buy clothes that will cover your nakedness. Don't buy clothes that will seduce. Hallelujah. Don't buy ungodly clothes like trousers. According to the word of God in Deuteronomy chapter 25 and 22 verse 5. Sister Ruth. Hallelujah. Amen. You will see what God is talking about trousers. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The word of God says in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5 I read. Yes. A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man. A woman shall not wear anything that pertains to a man. Nor shall a man put on a woman's garment for all who for all who do so are an abomination unto the Lord your God. For all who do so, who do so are an, an abomination unto the Lord. If you are a sister, you say you are born again, you still wear men's garment, you have to go and repent. You have to go and repent. Don't hide under the teaching of pastors. Those pastors, they know what they are looking for. They will not stand for you in the day of judgment. They will stand for themselves. You came on this earth alone. You will go, go alone. Don't allow your flesh to throw you to hell. Hallelujah. Amen. Because those that are in Christ have crucified their flesh in the cross. According to the word of God in Galatians chapter 5 verse 24. Hallelujah. Amen. That those that are in Christ have nailed their flesh and their desire on, on the cross. Ask yourself, my flesh, has it been crucified? Mm. If you are in Christ, your flesh must die for the Holy Spirit to take control. Yes. The Holy Spirit cannot walk with the flesh. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. One must die. If you are a child of God, if you love the world, that means that you are not yet born again. Mm -hmm. Something is wrong. My sister, read the word of God in First John, First John, chapter two, verse fifteen to seventeen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The book of First John, chapter two, verse fifteen. I read: Do not love the world. Do not love the world. No. Do not love the world. Do not love the world. All the things. All the things in the world. In the world. If anyone, if anyone loves the world, Amen. the love of the Father is not in him. Hmm. For all that is in the world. The loss of flesh, mm. the loss of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Yes. And the world is passing away. Amen. The, uh, the world, the and the world is passing away, and the loss of it. That he who that he who does the will of God Amen. abides forever. Amen. 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 Do Amen. not love the world. The things are in the world. What are the things of that are in the world? All those ungodly things, those are the things of the world. Yeah. When you dress, you don't have to dress like a non-believer. If you are really a child of God, you don't have to put anything in your body. Mm. When even even me, when I even put my my the skirt, I still act 
the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, is it really confirmed? Because I'm not my own. My body does not belong to me anymore. Yes. Amen. My body belongs to God. Mm. So I have to ask God. I have to do my, 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 uh, uh, I have to do first work, you know, all my possible to dress godly. You know, buy a, a skirt. Instead of dress, I buy long skirt. I don't wear short skirt. Instead of dress, I buy, I, instead of trouser, I, I, buy, I buy long, long skirt. So, even wearing that long skirt, I still ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, is it really normal? Because everything, the Holy Spirit has to be I have to confirm because the word of God says that I have to be led by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Be he led by the Holy Spirit. Somebody will say, We are not more under bondage. We are no more under the law. Those are the things in the law. The word of God says in Galatians chapter 5, verse 18. If you be led by the Spirit of God, you are not under the law. Amen. You are not under the law. If the Holy Spirit disciplines you, if the Holy Spirit tells you to, to drop ungodly things, ungodly dressing, my sister, you are no more under the law. Don't let your flesh throw you to hell. Don't let the things of this world throw you to hell. Because God is a holy God. Hallelujah. Amen. God said we have to be holy because he is holy. On that day of judgment, all our deeds, all every, everything that we have done on earth will be exposed. God will not ignore your outward appearance. No. Everything will be exposed. Don't think that on earth you dress like a Jezebel. You dress like an alot. And you claim to be a child of God. That when you die, you will you, you, you look like an angel. No. No. Amen. The Lord has shown me in a dream. I saw a queue of people that just died. And in that queue, there was a sister... A sister that when she was on earth, she was a born again. She feared God according to her. But she refused to dress godly. The Lord showed this dream to me. I saw an angel of God in the right and an, an angel, another angel in the left. The angel of God on, on the right was holding a book. Each person that the name was not written on the book was given to the other angel. And that other angel would throw that such person in hell. I saw that sister. Her name was not written in the book of life. And they threw her in hell. Why, why, when she was thrown in hell, she was crying. I was a born again when I was on earth. Why, why, Lord, am I going to hell? The angel of God says, look at the way you are dressing. You never believe that God look at appearance. All those things cannot make heaven. Don't think that. When you are on earth, you dress like an unbeliever. When you die, you will look holy. No. If somebody tells you that God does not look at your appearance, that is the gospel of Antichrist. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to give you my testimony. When I just gave my life to Jesus, I was hungry for God. But when I was going, I, at the church I used to attend, they told me that God does not look at the appearance. So you can do any hairstyle, you can dress anyhow, as far as not exposed, it's okay. But that day, I was walking on, in the street in a summer day. A bus stop, bus driver stopped. He was warning, beep, 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 beep. Me, I'm a believer. If a car stop or a bus stop, honey, I will not stop. So I was just going on my way. But the bus driver was still honing and honing and honing. Then he was calling, calling. Then I tried to look. I noticed that it was me. I said, ah, me? I don't have any boyfriend. I'm a believer. Then the man said, come, come, come. I know you. Then I thought, it's a, it's a brother in Christ that know me in the church. So I decided to cross the road. Brother, when I crossed the road, the man opened the box. I entered inside the box. The box. The man just took a pen and a note. What is your name? What is your name? Give me your phone number. You are sexy. I said, I rebuke you, Satan, in the mighty name of Jesus. I am a child of God. I don't commit adultery anymore. I don't fornicate. Please open the, the box. I thought you were a Christian, so you, you, you are calling me for nonsense. You better give your life to Jesus. Brother, and sister, I was ashamed of myself when I came out from their boat. I said, Father, 
Why this man was not able to differentiate me from a non-believer? When I told him that I'm a Christian, he does not believe. Why? The Holy Spirit minister to me that is because of my appearance. So my appearance make that man a bus driver. Can you imagine? Can you imagine a bus driver stop in the middle of the road because of my dressing? That day my hair, according to what some Christian says, my hair was normal. I just did Rihanna half like this one size and trouser, normal trouser. And I didn't even make makeup too much. But still, the Holy Spirit told me that my appearance. That is how God helped me. I start dropping all those things. The things I, the day I throw on my trouser. Ah, my brother. I took the scissors. I was cutting, cutting them with holy anger. And I throw them in the bin. I said, Lord, as I'm throwing them like this, I'm throwing my past in the mighty name of Jesus. Since that day, when I dress the way I am like this, no man has ever stopped me on the way. If a man stopped me on the way, that man that means that that man is a is a demon he incarnate. And you know, and my dressing is not the one, is not the one that makes him fall into, into loss. So it's, I'm not guilty. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because if a man falls into the sin of loss because of what you are putting in your, in your, your, your eyes. Those makeups, those earrings, those fake hair. You have rejected the hair of God. And you put on the hair that the devil is, is, is giving on to you. If a man falls into sin because of you, you are committing adultery with that man. You better go and repent in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't put your garment with worldliness. Heaven is too, is too pure to accommodate, accommodate all those ungodly things. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But the way I see Christianity of today is the broad way. Everything is allowed. Everything is allowed. When, the re when I read the story of Ananias and Sapphira, if, if that story, if Ananias and Sapphira was on these days, they would not die. Because they will, not, they, will, they, they will not even know that it's a sin against God. This generation have turned the truth to unrighteousness. A sister told me that. Can you imagine? That when she does not put makeup, she look horrible. That is a blasphemy. That is insulting the creation of God. If you are one of them, one of those sisters that say that your natural hair, your natural, your natural hair is rough, that your face is ugly, you better go and repent. God knows why your hair is rough. The word of God says that everything God created is good. You don't know, you don't need to, to correct to correct God. Hallelujah. 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 You better repent. You better repent. Mm. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Amen. Jesus Christ is coming soon. Amen. If you've heard this message mm. and you found out that all this while that you have given your life to Jesus, you are still dressing like an unbeliever. Go to God and cry. Say, Father Lord, kill my flesh. Today, Lord, I crucify my flesh to the cross. Holy Spirit leads me. I'm ready to obey, hallelujah. Because the word of God says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Read my sister. The book of first the book of First Thessalonians, chapter 5, verse 23. I read. Mm -hmm. Now, now may the God of now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. Amen. And may your whole spirit, soul, and body Amen. be preserved blameless. Amen. At the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. The word of God said that may your whole, your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God will not hide anything on that day. Don't think that God will not look that day at your at that day if you were here on earth 
and you still dress like an unbeliever. Don't think that that day God will ignore them. No. According to the word of God in Thessalonians 1, 1 Thessalonians, that your body must be blameless. Hallelujah. Your spirit must be blameless. Hallelujah. Your soul must be blameless. Hallelujah. Therefore, glorify God with your body. Honor God with your body. Don't defile the temple of the Holy Spirit with your body. Hallelujah. I will end this word in the book of God, in the, in the book of the word of God in 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Yeah. Verse 14 I read. Amen. Do not be an equally yoke. Amen. Together with unbelievers. Yes. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? Mm -hmm. And what communion has light with darkness? Mm. And what uh, and what accord has Christ with Belial? Mm. Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Yes. And what agreement has the temple of God with yes. idol? What so agreement you, had the temple of God with idol? All those idol, all those makeup. All those earrings, all those attachments, those wool that you put in your hair, the trouser, throw them away. Don't defile the temple of the Holy Spirit with unclean things. What agreement has the temple of God with idol? That is the word of God. He that has an ear, let him hear. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Beloved brothers and sisters, my name is Daniela from Nigeria. I thank God for the life of my sister, Sister Claire. Dun. She has really spoken a lot today. I pray that everyone that will hear this message today, that your life will not remain the same anymore. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I had my encounter on the 21st of May, 2011. From that day, my life changed. After I encountered our Lord Jesus Christ. For those of us that haven't yet watched the video, you can just go to YouTube or you can go to my profile. Just click on Evangelist Daniela, then you see that you can watch the video for yourself about how I encountered our Lord Jesus Christ. Just click on my encounter with Jesus Christ, Sister Daniela, then you see the video, you can watch it. I saw a rapture, I saw people that really went to heaven and how people were stuck on earth that couldn't rapture on that day. What are we saying here, beloved brothers and sisters, that heaven is so real and hell is real. Anything whatsoever that will not make us to to make heaven. While we are still here on earth, while we still have life, we can put those things aside. Everything that doesn't glorify God. I pray that God will give us the strength in the name of Jesus. Amen. My sister, Sister Claire, she has really spoken a lot today. But I just want to add more to what she said. And as well, I just want to confirm all that she has spoken about how women should dress. Amen. After my encounter with our Lord Jesus Christ, I was still in the mood of shock. I was still in the state of shock. But God Almighty in His infinite mercy, He was he started revealing to me because God will not just encounter a man and leave the man to be so. He started revealing to me the things that almost landed me in hell. The things I really needed to repent from. The sins of the heart and all those things. But to my greatest surprise, I was surprised to see that God was concerned about my outward look as well. Before I used to think God is not concerned about the way we dress as Christians. God is so concerned about everything we do. The way we dress, the kind of clothes we put on. God started revealing to me that I shouldn't wear trousers anymore. I shouldn't put permit on my hair anymore. I shouldn't put wigs on my hair anymore. Weave on wool and all those kind of mad people's hair. Satanic hair. That I shouldn't use it to defile my hair anymore. The word of God says that the hair of a woman is our glory. The hair that God has given to us, we women, is our glory. If you be from Africa, accept your hair to be so. If you be from Asia, from Australia, from America, from any part of the world, just accept the image that God has given to you. Accept the hair that God has given to you. Accept the way that God has created you to be. You trying to change the handwork of God, you trying to change the creation of God, is an abomination unto the Lord. We have to repent from all those things. I personally, I never knew those things. I never knew that God was concerned about our outward look. 
The Bible says that God created us in his own image. If God has created your hair to have the Afro type, originally from the African continent, just accept it to be. If God has created you with anything, just accept it to be the way God has created you. Because we were all created in the image of God. Anyone defiling the temple of God, which is our body, is provoking God to hunger. And the Bible says that whosoever defies the temple of God, that God Almighty himself will destroy to my greatest surprise, God started showing me all those things. Even jewelry. There was a day our Lord Jesus Christ visited me from heaven. It was in the evening. I saw him. Heaven was open. Our Lord Jesus Christ came down from the cloud with a white horse, with his glorious body. But before he could identify with me on that revelation, I was having jewelry in my hand. Just a ring. It was like a wedding ring. And some bangles on my hand. And I had to remove those things before he, he could identify with me. Beloved brothers and sisters, you might doubt this, but I pray that it will not be too late before you know the truth. Amen. Because Christ for mercy in hell is asking for the impossible. Mm. After death, there is no more repentance. Mm -hmm. I had to remove those jewelry from my hands because before I was able to identify with our Lord Jesus Christ. As far as God is concerned, God hates hiders. We might see hiders as only images that people go there to bow down and worship image. These days, hiders are beyond that. When you go to Ezekiel chapter 14, you see some people, they have idols, even in their own hearts. If you have any decision inside your heart and you come into God, before God is already an idol. Even our body, just watch and see. When God created you as a man, as a woman, Every part of your body that needed hold, God put them before you were being born. But we just coming into this head and we start putting hold here, here, in every part of our body. What are we saying? We are trying to tell God that he has not created us well. And we're not trying to tell God how to create. We are, we are sitting against God and we are calling down his wrath. I pray that as we hear this message today, we repent in the name of Jesus. Amen. What are we saying here, beloved brothers and sisters? Everything that doesn't glorify God, we have to depart totally away from us, from them. It is very rare to hear these messages from churches. Many churches, they don't preach about these things. They don't talk about all these things because they don't want to lose members. It's okay. But on that day, they will stand, they will be judged. And the blood of many souls will be upon them. I pray that your blood will not, will not be required. From the hands of fake prophets that are not ready to preach the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, work out your own salvation. This message of salvation you are hearing here today, it is very difficult for you to hear it outside this place. I tell you the truth. I have been to churches. I have never heard that God is concerned about our outward look. Because many preachers of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, they know that if they start preaching about these things, many people will not want to go, come to their churches anymore. Many people will not feel comfortable. Preachers, they just want their members to feel comfortable. Hmm. They decide not to preach what their members want to hear, not what God wants them to speak about anymore. People preach holiness now according to their own pattern, not according to the pattern of God. Hey, you preachers of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ all over the world. It is high time you tell people the truth. It is high time you let people know that God is holy. It is high time you let people know that whosoever defies the temple of God, that God Almighty will destroy. It is high time you let people know that there must be difference between a prostitute and a child of God. I went out a few days ago with my beloved sister, Sister Claire. A man saw us on the street and he said, my sister, are you Muslims? We said, no, we are not Muslims. We are Christians. He said, wow. He has never, he was so surprised because in his life, he has never seen a Christian dressed like this with a long skirt in a very, very appropriate way. Because in his life, all the Christians he has seen, there is no difference between Christians and non-believers. He was so surprised. He said, you are a very good Christian then. He was so amazed. So see a Christian dressed in a very, very godly way. We shared it with lots of our friends. Some people say, yeah, because we Christians, we don't preach Christianity with our outward look. People look at the inside. How can the inside be clean when the outside is still dirty? It's not just possible. Because what we see, what we feel, and what we hear communicates with our inner man, which is our heart. And it defies the heart. The inside cannot be clean when the outside is not yet 
outward. You have to repent from the outward look first. People don't see you. Matthew 5, 16 says, Let your work so shine above men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father that is in heaven. Amen. Amen. People don't see your outward look as well. You are not the people to, you are not the one to tell people that you are a Christian. People will see and they will see the glory of God upon your life. The way you dress, the way you speak, everything you do. People will see the glory of God upon your life. Then they will glorify your Father that is in heaven. Amen. If a Christian, a so-called Christian goes to the street and there is no difference between the way he or she dresses and the way that home believer dresses. <laughs> Beloved brothers and sisters, there is a problem somewhere. That Christian, there is a big question mark upon your head. And that question mark, you are the one to answer it. You are the one to answer that question. If you go out to the street and people even call you, they call you sexy. There is a big question mark upon your head. Which you need to answer. Because crying for mercy in hell is asking for the impossible. There are many preachers of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ all over the world. Wearing trousers. Defining themselves with different idols. Where is satanic hair all over their all over their head? They are trying to tell God that the way God has created them to be, that the natural hair that God has given to them, which God Himself sees, has the glory of a woman. They are not trying to tell God that that glory is not worth it. So they are not bringing the, the satanic hair from the marine kingdom or the kingdom of darkness to pollute the what an insult. You have to repent from all this. You just have to. The glory that God has given to you, which is your hair, you don't have to defile it. You are not the one to tell God that what he has created is not well created. If God says that your hair is your glory, you have to accept it so. If God says that you are created in his own image, for a woman to say that without makeup, that she looks horrible, what an insult. God has created you in his own image. The word of God says so. So who are you to say that without you using makeup, satanic makeup, satanic waist, trousers, leggings, and whatever, all those polluted things to defy the temple of God that she looks horrible. You have to repent from that this day. You just have to repent. If not, I tell you, you're already in hell. But you have to bring yourself out. There are many preachers of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ all over the world wearing trousers, wearing all kind of satanic hair all over their body, all kind of jewelries, high doors, they call, they call, they call jewelries. I tell you this, this, this day, if God wants you to put earrings in your ear, your mother will give birth to you with holes on your ears. Yes. When your mother gave birth to you, you never had those holes. Mm -hmm. Because we, we human beings, we are never, never satisfied. We always want to prove that we know more. You can never know more than God. You have to take up those idols. Because God never put any hole in any part of your body. He never put any hole in your ears. Every part of your body that needs hole, they'll be put before your parents get back to you. Amen. So you're not trying to put holes in other places. You are defiling the temple of God, which is your body. Amen. And you pay for it after that, unless you repent and come out of it. I pray that God will give you the grace to repent and come out of it in the name of Jesus. Amen. You can say to me, God is using you. You are preaching the gospel. Even if you are wearing trousers. Even if you are wearing gay, uh, wigs. Even if you are wearing makeup, lipstick, whatever. Hide those all over your body. Change jewelry. Snap them on. You can be saying that you are preaching the gospel. God is using you. I'm telling you. I'm not disputing that with you. That you are being used by God or not. Who am I to judge you? But according to what God has shown to me, any woman using such things, it cannot make heaven. Mm. That's why we have to come together to make this video together. I thank God for making me know my sister, sister clear. Amen. I said, no, we have to combine this. Not just we alone, so many sisters, they've seen these revelations, but because of the place they live, we couldn't really come together to speak about this. You can be preaching the gospel. It's okay. If God can use a shark to save the life and the soul of, of Jonah from destroying in the ocean, God can likewise use you. It's okay. If God can use a donkey to speak to Bala, God can use you. It's okay. If God can use animals, why can't he use a human being? It's okay. You can raise up the dead, you can cleanse the leper, you can heal the sick, you can cast out devils in the name of Jesus Christ. It's okay. But does that have anything to do with your salvation? 
The Bible says that we should walk out our salvation with fear and trembling. Apostle Paul says that he watched out himself every day that after preaching the gospel, that he himself will not be a castaway. Mm -hmm. You can preach the gospel, you can be a spiritual signboard, directing people to the right way, directing people to heaven, and you are there, you are not going anywhere because you refuse to do the will of God. The word of God says, on that day, many will say, Lord, Lord, I heal the sick in your name. I cast out devils in your name. I did miracles. And our Lord Jesus Christ said, he will say to them, I knew you not. Get them behind me, you workers of iniquity. Mm. I believe that is in your Bible too. You can do miracles and do all sorts of things. It's okay in the name of Jesus. But it has absolutely nothing to do with your salvation. Mm. You are the one to work out your salvation. Lots and lots of revelations have been given to us. By God Almighty, that's why we say we have to come together and put this video together so that people can really know that these things, they are real. I give God the glory. I thank God for you being able to watch this video. I thank God that you have listened to this this day. Mm -hmm. I beg you, my beloved brothers and sisters, please try to share this video with other living souls. Mm -hmm. This video is for everybody. The men are not excluded. Now I want to share the scripture with you. Let's go to the book of James chapter 2 from verse 2 to 3. James 2, 2 to 3 says, For if there come unto your assembly a man with a gold ring, Apostle Paul says, uh, uh, Brother James says here, a man with a gold ring, now listen, in a gold ring apparel, which is okay, and therefore come in also a poor man in a vile raiment, I'm reading from King James Version. Chapter, verse 3 says, And ye have respect to him that wears the gay clothing. I believe you can see that in your Bible. For Brother James, this is the holy book of God. It's not written by me. For Brother James to address a brother wearing jewelry as a gay. I believe there is a problem somewhere. For him to see a man wearing jewelry and call him a gay in the Bible. This is the New Testament. This is not the Old Testament. I believe there is a problem somewhere. Some people, when you try to speak to them, they tell you, oh, that is the Old Testament. They are not longer under the Old Testament. Jesus Christ did not come to change the law. He came to fulfill the law. Amen. You telling people, this is, we are no longer talking about the Old Testament. We now speak about the New Testament. It's okay. But how come when you want to talk about tithe and offering, you go to the Old Testament because you know you benefit from it. The same way you preach about tithe and offering from the Old Testament, you have to talk about God's standards for holiness from the book of Genesis to the book of Revelation. God Almighty, the whom the Bible says is holy, requires holiness from H to Z. The way we think, we must be holy. The way we honor each other, we must be holy. The way we speak with our mouth, we must be holy. Even the way we dress, God Almighty requires holiness. So don't talk about holiness in the New Testament and say, both in the New and the Old Testament. My sister, sister Claire read lots of scriptures to you, to your hearing, both from the Old and from the New Testament. She read lots of things. So don't only go to the New Testament because you, the Old Testament because you want to talk about tithing and offering. Talk about God's standard for holiness. God has not changed his standard for anyone. Yes. God's standard for holiness still remains the same. Amen. So I, I just came here to share my own experience with you. All those things you think you're wearing now, all those things you're using to defy yourself, they will only land you in hell. They are not taking you in anywhere else. Unless you repent. I used to do those things before. I never knew they were wrong. But I thank God that God Almighty in his infinite mercy. I encountered our Lord Jesus Christ. Whom the, which the video I believe many of us we've watched. But if you haven't watched it. I tell you again. Just click on my encounter with Jesus Christ. Sister Daniela. There you can watch the video. After my encounter, this I'm sharing with you now. They are all revelations from God Almighty. I didn't fabricate all these things. God started showing to me the things that makes women to go to hell. He started showing them to me. To my greatest surprise, our outward look matters a lot. Please, all those trousers, feel the clothes that God doesn't like, just throw them to the bin. Those things, they are all idols. They are all defilements. God's eyes is too holy to be held iniquity. Just throw them to the bin. Buy yourself godly dresses, godly clothes.
Buy yourself good skirts, long skirts, and not skirts so tight showing your, your figures. God is not interested about those things. Stop seducing people. High lashes, fishing extra nails. For what? Painting your nails, painting your face, your lips, whatever. It's a defilement. God Almighty hates such things with so much passion. Mm-hmm. As you have listened to this word of God today, I pray that God Almighty will give you the heart to receive this word in the name of Jesus. Yes. I pray that this word will fall on the fatal ground in your heart in the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that the devil whom has succeeded in landing lots of people in hell will not steal this word from you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I pray as well that the devil will not enter in, in, into anybody to deceive you, telling you not to believe this word. Mm-hmm. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Every spirit of doubt that we want to steal this words away from you. I pray that God Almighty should remove them away from your heart. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. My beloved brothers and sisters. Heaven and hell is so real. Mm-hmm. God's standards for holiness is inside and outside. Don't let anybody deceive you anymore. Because they don't want to lose members. On that day, it doesn't matter which church you go here on earth. But what the standard of holiness you live here on earth is what will qualify you for heaven. So you better look for a place where you hear the real word of God. Mm. If you are in a place they are still preaching to you that there is no hell, you better look for a place where you hear the real word of God. If you are in a place where they are still worshipping idols, it doesn't matter what they call themselves, they go there to bow down for images. You better look for a place where they will teach you about heaven and hell. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, hear ye the word of God today. These words are not fabricated by us. We cannot just sit down here bringing the wrath of God upon ourselves. Amen. But these are revelations from God Almighty. Amen. That he has asked my sister, Sister Claire Odu, to share to all over the world. Amen. And I too, the same instructions God gave to me about the things I must repent from. Then I said, my sister, I must partake in this. Let people know that this sin is not just you bringing it out. We have lots of sisters as well that know that this, this is very, very true. So my brother, my sister, all those things you used to decorate yourself that makes you look like a masquerade in the spiritual realm that the eyes of God cannot behold. I'm not saying you don't speak in tongues. I'm not saying that you cannot heal the sick. You can't raise up the dead. It's okay. But those things, they are all gifts here on earth. They are all gifts here on earth. The Bible says that the gift and the calling of God is without repentance. Mm. God can call you and use you. Doesn't mean that you are not a sinner. Mm. But you are the one to work out your salvation. And I pray that God Almighty in his infinite mercy will give you the heart to receive this word, work out your salvation. And at the end of it all, I pray that you will land in heaven. Because crying for mercy in hell is asking for the impossible. Mm. God bless you, my brothers. God bless you. I leave you with my sister, sister Antonia. God bless you. I bless the name of our Lord Jesus Christ who has given me the privilege to, to speak to to the world concerning his word and the doctrine of Jesus Christ and to the women Amen. in the name of Jesus. Father, I, I pray, Lord, uh, as we study your word, Jesus, that you Amen. go with us in Jesus' name. Amen. My fellow brethren, I want Amen. to talk to you. I want, I, I want to talk to you Amen. about about women dressing Amen. of this day. Amen. Beloved, I want to let us know that in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, the only woman that the Bible made mention that make up in the Bible was Jezebel. Mm-hmm. Beloved, I want to tell us that God Almighty is really concerned about the way women dress. Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 5, Behold, you have heard in the old that thou that, that shall not commit adultery. He said, any man that looks at a woman and call it, any man that looks at a woman and lost after her, commits adultery with her. You know, that, that is only looking at a woman. Commits adultery already. How much more, beloved? That means we women, we are causing men to fall into adultery. We are causing men to fall through the way we dress, through the way we do things. Beloved, it's time that we change. I thank the Lord for the life of my sister, Sister Claire and Sister Daniela. They've really spoken well. They, I, I just have little to say. Because even me, myself, the day I gave my life to Jesus Christ, that was still the way I, uh, that was still the way I encountered the Lord. The Lord changed 
my dressing too that very day. The, the Lord took me. He took, the Lord called me from heaven and said, any soul that sinned shall die. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid and I, I, because I've never heard the voice of God. Mm -hmm. And the Lord presented the woman. The Lord presented the woman that took me. I, I didn't know the woman. But the woman was dressed in a godly way. You know that I want to tell you the truth. Like in my country, Nigeria, there is a church called Deeper Life. They dress very decent. And before I gave my life to Jesus, I hated them with perfect hatred because of the way they dress. But the day I got born again, the, the, the woman that took me to, to, to instruct me dressed like a Deeper Life woman. The hair was covered. Her, her, the dress she wore was was complete from neck from uh, from from the neck to the toes mm -hmm. everywhere was covered because i was my dressing was was nonsense then i dressed half naked but then i didn't know i didn't know that god hates those things and i go to church so beloved i want us to know that the way we dress matters a lot in the sight of God and in the sight of man. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, many people, many preachers who teaches that God is only looking at the heart. God is not after our dressing. Beloved, it's high time. It's high time we disagree with yeah. such doctrine. Amen. Because if those doctrines are leading people to hell, yes. you have heard what my beloved sister said. Mm -hmm. Though the Lord didn't take me far, uh, uh, far like that, but I know that I, according to how the Lord appeared to me, changed my life, I know it's true. Yeah. So what they are saying is very correct. Yeah. Please, when you hear the word of God, do not harden your heart. Mm -hmm. What shall we say? How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Mm -hmm. So so great salvation that is being preached, beloved. You, you know, we might say in the time of ignorance, God overlooked. That is before you come to Christ. Yeah. Now you are in Christ Jesus. You are in Christ Jesus. Mm. All things are passed away. Everything in your life must pass away. Yes. The dressing of this world. Yes. We should, there must be difference between Deborah and Delilah. Yes. There Amen. must be difference between the daughters of Jezebel and the children of the light. Amen. The Bible says that the devil has transformed himself into a, an angel of light. Yeah. The devil is there. The queen of the coast has entered into the world, into the church to divert the children of God away from making in heaven be wise be wise mm -hmm. and i want to talk about women god created us to be black and we will use cream we will bleach and we become white it is it's terrible we are defiling the temple of the living god mm -hmm. see the, the almighty god said whosoever that defies his, his body the same shall god destroy oh, yes. mm -hmm. it's not only with fornication mm -hmm. All these idolatry things, all this, all, all, all this makeup, all this makeup attachment, uh, jewelries, jewelry of all kinds, whether it's earring, necklace, hand chain, the leg wall, the rings, every, all of them are the same. Yes. Because our body is the temple of God. Yes. Let us stop abusing God. Do you know, do you know when you try to change? The way God created you, you are abusing God. Mm -hmm. You are telling God that He doesn't know who, what He has done in your body. Let us repent. Yes. Let us repent. Jesus is coming soon. Hallelujah. He is coming to present us unto Himself. Jesus is coming yeah. for a church without spot nor wrinkle. Amen. Amen. Jesus is coming for us. Yes, we might be saying, we might be out there saying, uh, yeah, yeah, some people are, uh, some people they dress very w well like Christians. Inside their hearts they are very wicked. Beloved, who are you to judge? Who are you? Do not judge anyone. Jesus said we should not judge. According to the book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 1. He said do not judge. Don't judge. And because as long as, as long as we are still in flesh, the devil is still waging war. The flesh is still waging war. So when you see somebody who dresses as a child of God and is wicked, don't condemn that person with an attitude. That person might go inside and make a way right with God. You know, you are not there. So don't condemn anybody because a lot of people hide on that distance and, and, and say, and, and, and say, I say some people, they dress very well, but they are very wicked. It's not your business. Leave that person to God. 
It's Jesus that died for her and it's Jesus that died for you. We never die for any man. Mm -hmm. It's what Jesus has committed into our hands to do. That is what we are doing. Mm -hmm. Please let us repent from all this bleaching of the skin. Mm -hmm. Men bleaching, you will see some men. Mm -hmm. They bleach, they change their colors. Mm -hmm. Why? Men will plait their hair. Men, men will wear earrings. Mm -hmm. Please, all, all this earring of 18 is a sign of slave. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in, in the book of El, Old Testament that that all, he, he, that is um, slaves uh, slaves for their master. If they want to remain with their master, they open their ears and put uh, uh, and put in earrings mm -hmm. something. See, then they become slaves to their master forever. Mm -hmm. Beloved, like do you people want to be slaves to the devil? If you yield to the devil, you become the slave of the devil. Mm -hmm. If you yield to Jesus Christ, you become the slave of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. According to the word of God, anyone that you yield to is whom you become the slave. Mm -hmm. So, beloved, heaven is real and hell is real. Mm -hmm. Let us be, let us be conscious of what we do. Like, uh, like, uh, like a, a, a testimony of a brother I read, and I know it's true. Jesus himself appeared to him and took him to hell. This brother saw in hell, a sister was crying in hell. He was asking for mercy in hell. It's impossible. What took this sister to hell was hearing, pardon. Whether jelly, jelly coin, pardon, bleaching of the skin, Painting of the leaves, makeup, trousers, all these things. Beloved, <laughs> do away with all, all, all these things. Mm. I die know, beloved, I die know will not be our portion in Jesus' mighty Amen. name. I don't want us to cry. What if, what if you argue what we are, what we are saying? And on, and the day you die, you, you now realize that all these things are true. Will you be able to come back and amend your ways? Will you be able to come back and repent? It's better for us to hear and go back to God. If, if it's difficult for you to believe what we are saying, go to God, your maker, the Jesus who died for you. Amen. Say, Jesus, show me, Lord, convince me. The Lord will convince you if you ask from your heart without any idol in your heart. The Lord will visit you. The Lord is changing people all over the world through these messages. Mm -hmm. And that is why we have come together again to put this together to share with you, beloved. Jesus Christ has died for us. And Jesus is weeping every day. The way people are going to hell. You see, like that sister that, that was in the hell by our beloved brother. Brother Michael, <laughs> brother Michael Sambo Thomas. Beloved, this woman, this woman might... She have a pure heart because it, she have a pure heart. She live a godly life, but because of trouser, makeup, pumping of all, all, all this worldliness that she used to defy the temple of the Holy Spirit, these things led her to hellfire. Now she's regretting she cannot come back to amend her way. Beloved, hellfire is horrible. Hmm. It's terrible. It's a place of of of, of, of torment. But, it's a pity that God, it's a pity that God is throwing man to hell. But when God Almighty created hellfire, he never created it for man. Mm -hmm. He created it for devil and his agents. But because of the disobedience of man, the Lord God Almighty have decided to throw man to hell without mercy. Because Jesus has come to give his life. He has done everything he, he needed to do for us, to have eternity. But man has decided to go in their own way. Mm. Then Jesus himself has made up his mind. Anyone that hates him. Jesus said in the book of Psalm, in the book of, in the book of Psalm chapter 9 verse 17, he said, he, he said all the nations that hate me, all the nations that hate God shall be turned into hell. <laughs> Beloved, anyone who hates God will be turned into hell. <laughs> anyone who rejects the message of holiness within and without will be turned into hell. Mm. If you are pure inside, you must be pure outside. Mm. The inside, Jesus said that what comes out of a man is what defies a man, not what goes in. Mm. Your heart. Anything you do comes from the heart. Mm -hmm. That is why when you work on your body, you work on your heart. Yeah. You work on every area of your heart. Your mm -hmm. spiritual and body is required. Mm -hmm. You cannot leave your body and work on your heart alone and say, 
is the only heart God looks on. No! God looks at the heart and he looks at the body. Mm-hmm. As you are getting your heart ready for the coming of Jesus, the same time get ready for it, get your body ready too. Mm-hmm. So that the devil will not use anything to hold you down. Yeah. Because your body, our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Who is Amen. defies the temple yeah. of the Holy Spirit? The mm-hmm. same shall be destroyed Amen. by God himself. Yeah. God is never a respecter of any man. Amen. He has created us. Amen. He created us in his own image. Amen. God, I thank God for the love of our Lord Jesus Christ Amen. for humanity. Amen. His he, 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 his everlasting love for us is so much, Amen. beloved. Why must we perish? Because of the way we want to live our life. Beloved, the Bible says in the book of First John, according to the passage my sister read, the book of First John chapter 2, the Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Yeah. Anyone who loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Mm-hmm. You have seen the loss of the flesh. Yeah. You want to do the right thing, the flesh will say no. You must say no to flesh. Yes. yes. You want to do the right thing, the loss of uh, the pride of life will say no. You must eat, you must walk against the pride of life. A mortal man, mortal man thinks you know they own the whole world. They are here for forever. They don't know that one day. The owner of the whole life, the owner of our lives, will require their soul one day. Mm. You know, they both, they acquire heaven and earth. They don't even care what, what they do to get wealth, mm. to get, to enrich themselves, mm. forgetting that one day they will die mm-hmm. and face their eternity. Mm-hmm. Beloved, where will you spend your eternity? Mm-hmm. Ask yourself. I'm asking myself. This message is not for you alone. Even as I'm talking to you, I'm still, I, I'm still talking to myself. I don't want us to go to hell. Yes. Jesus has created us. Jesus Christ has made everything available for us to reign with him. Mm-hmm. The choice is yours. The choice is mine. And God has given us the power of choice to decide where we will reign. Uh, uh, where we will spend our eternity. Mm-hmm. Please, my my beloved brethren, both sisters, both brothers, anyone, every one of us, the Lord is talking to us. For us to flee from the wrath of God that is coming, Amen. Jesus is coming very soon. We don't mm-hmm. know. Amen. We don't know. The day you die, your own Jesus has come that very day. You might be saying, it's, it's not now. They are saying Jesus is coming, it's coming. When is it going to come? That they don't know what they are saying. But beloved, I tell you, the day you die, your Jesus has come that day. Mm. That day you start your eternity. It's left for us to work out our salvation with trembling and with fear. And stop all this worldliness, all this breaching of a thing. All these worldly uh, 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 things that will not lead us anywhere. The flesh is very deceitful. Flesh will deceive us, deceive us. The very day the flesh deceives us to the grave. The flesh will go. Flesh has finished the assignment. Mm. It will leave you to your eternity. Then, what will you do, beloved? What will you do? A die no will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Name. Please, as this message is coming to you from us, please, if you don't understand anything that we have said, go to God. God is your maker. Mm. Jesus is the one that died for you. Mm. Cry to him. Cry to him, say, Lord, help me. These things my sisters have said, Lord, show me. Lord, help me to do away with them. I tell you, if you are sincere, the Lord will tell you. Don't mind all these prosperity preachers. They, they, they will face their own judgment. Mm. Whatever a man sows, the same is going to reap. Mm. And, and, and it's a pity that what the Lord has asked us to say, that many people are not saying it. In the church because of what they want mm-hmm. because they don't want to lose members mm-hmm. they want to pay for church rent but we are but <laughs> but they have forgotten that jesus is not a respecter of any person mm-hmm. that one day they will give account of what they are doing mm-hmm. don't listen to anybody mm-hmm. if you try to do anything if you are not able to to do it cry to god Amen. jesus will give you the grace is the it's only Jesus Christ that help us to do away with all these things. I yes. tell you, my beloved brethren, it wasn't easy. Mm. It wasn't easy, personal, most especially me, personal. It was not easy for me. Mm. I try, I try, and try. I, I fell, I fell, I fell, and the Lord dealt with me. Mm. 
but he brought me back Amen. by his mercy. Beloved, we need the mercy of God, Amen. we need the grace of God. Amen. It's not by strength. Amen. By strength shall no man prevail. Amen. Please go to God if you don't understand anything. If you don't understand anything, go to Jesus, cry to him. Amen. He loves us. As long as we are still alive, hope the our hope is not lost mm. yet. But once we die, everything is finished. But as long as we are still alive, we still have hope. Yeah. When you cry to Jesus now, he will show mercy and save you. Amen. But if you wait till you die, you will face your eternity. Jesus mm. does not have time for people that are dead because they are asking for the impossible. Mm. He can never do anything. He can never rescue anyone. Except... Except when you are dying, if you ask him for mercy, yes, he, he, if it pleases him for you to reign with him, he shows you mercy because he said, he said he will show mercy to whom he will show mercy on. Mm. It's not of you that we let neither need that run it. <laughs> but he is, he is God that shows mercy. Yeah. But how many people know the day they will die? <laughs> how many people know the second the minute they will die? It's only the people who are sick, they tell them, put your house in order. You are dying so 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 time. It's it's only those those kind of people that have the grace, you know, to repent if they want to to repent. But people go out and say, ah, I'm going to work, I'm going to so 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 place, and they never return back again. And some people they will procrastinate their salvation, they will postpone it, postpone it till the day that till the day that time will run out, mm -hmm. beloved. I, I don't want our time to run out and we end up in hell. Mm. Please, let us do everything, everything, everything it will take us mm. to get eternity. Amen. Let us try to pay the price. Amen. Jesus has died for us. Amen. Jesus loves us. Amen. And he cares for us. Amen. And he's coming for us. Amen. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming to present us unto himself. Amen. The Bible says in the book of Colossians, he, 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 God, he, the Bible says that those uh, it, it says it, 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 it says that those that have this hope they purify themselves mm. as he is pure. Mm. If, if we that have this hope in Christ, we must be purified because Amen. our Lord Jesus is pure. Amen. We, we must be ready. The the word of God says we should set our affection on things above, mm. not the things on earth. Mm. Those that have this hope in him, they purify themselves mm. as he is pure. Mm. Beloved, if you if you have this hope, mm. if you have this hope of eternity, please be, please, my brother, purify your body, Amen. soul, and spirit. Amen. So that when he will appear, when he comes, we will, we will be like him mm. because he is pure. Amen. We will be rapture with him. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And I pray that the Lord Jesus Christ will help you to put all these things into practice just as you are hearing it from us and the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon you to lead you in path of holiness, righteousness and truth Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you, brother. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I thank God because I know that you have been blessed today in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to take this opportunity to speak about, to talk about my tattoo. I know many people have been asking the tattoo. She's a child of God. Why does she have a tattoo? God hates tattoo. And the Lord God knows that I hate this tattoo with perfect hatred. I did it when I was still a non-believer. And every day, I cry to God to forgive me. And I know that he has forgiven me. And I believe that the blood of Jesus will wipe away all those things. So if you see this tattoo, I'm trying even to, uh, to hide it. I'm not showing it. It's not a, it's not something, it's, it's a shame for a child of God to do tattoo. If you are a child of God, you are still doing tattoo. You better go and repent. Hallelujah. Amen. Does God not deserve our 100% holiness? Yes, He deserves it. Be holy because our Lord, oh God Almighty, yes. is holy. Amen. God bless you, my Amen. sister. God. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, my beloved. God bless you for bless you. To us. This man. This message that we have given to you is from God Almighty. Amen. I just leave us with these two Bible passages. Matthew 10, 40 says, He that receives you, receives me. As many that have received this word today, you have received Jesus Christ into your life. Amen. And the same Bible continues and says, And he that receives me, receives him that sent me. Amen. As many that have received this word of God today, you have not only received 
this word, but you have received Jesus Christ because the word of God in John 1 is Jesus Christ himself. Mm -hmm. You have received Jesus Christ into your spirit, soul, and body. Mm -hmm. And you, as men that have received Jesus Christ, because the same John 1 says that Jesus and God, they are one. Mm -hmm. As well, you have received God. And I pray that you continue to abide in the presence of God, that you will never, yeah. never depart away I from the yeah. presence of God. Amen. I pray that this message that will transform your life in the name of Jesus. As many that will listen to this message of the salvation, all over the world. I pray that this message of salvation will minister to your spirit, soul, and body. And I pray that this word will yield a good fruit. And I pray that on the last day, this word will transform you that you will not be a castaway. In the name of Jesus, as many that love God, I want to read with us in First John. I'm reading from First John chapter 5 from verse 3, which says, For this is the love of God. That we keep his commandments. As many that love God keep his commandments. Keep his commandments. His instructions. God has commandments. He has instructions. He has laws. And he has doctrines. You cannot come to God. You cannot be in Christ and want to serve God with your own pattern. He doesn't work so. If you love God, you have to adjust to the instructions of God. To the patterns of God. And serve God according to his patterns. I pray that God Almighty will help hold you. We give you the heart, the zeal, the strength to do according to his word in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.